Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, if you're not finished eating, you can go ahead and start continue eating. Uh, let's give a big round of applause to uh, the Senior Center for the wonderful meal. And Brenda, would you like to say anything, Brenda? Um, I just like to say that uh, it was our privilege to serve y'all today. We kind of served you just like we do the seniors. <laughs> uh, we did this because we're going to use your money to recover that red two pieces of furniture out there. And also over here is information on, I don't know if you guys know it, but Judge Johnson and I got the free tax site started back here in Ohio County. This will be our fourth year. If you want to take some pamphlets and pass out to anybody at your business, we do their taxes totally free. It's Mondays at the community center in the basement from 12 to 5. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, welcome back, Chris Hunt. If everybody doesn't know it. Sorry. Would you like to say anything? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Next Generation Youth Leadership, we'd like to thank them for being here today. And I'm going to ask uh, Chase to come up right now and do a presentation. Uh, if you see some, some younger faces uh, in the front of the room today, with us we have uh, Principal... Saul Wester with the Ohio County Area Technology Center that's located down there behind the middle school and uh, Ms. Metzger, the advisor for the uh, FBLA club uh, down at the Area Technology Center, which is our future <coughs> business leaders of America. And with us front and center, we have some of the students uh, that are a part of FBLA and will be competing in a regional competition at Western University in February. And we've got them with us today because the chamber has decided to sponsor their participation in this regional event, so we just wanted to uh, give them a chance to introduce themselves and, and a chance for you all to let them know that, that they have our support and we're behind them all the way, and we wanted to also present them uh, the check for the uh, for the sponsorship. So I believe Judy has that, so Mr. Saul Wester, if you'll come up, we'll take a picture. And if you all would, would you uh, take turns coming up to the mic and just introduce yourselves uh, to the uh, membership and what you'll be competing in. You can go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> we would like to thank you all for having us today. We are really thankful to be here and to accept the check from the chamber. My name is Emily Sis. I'm a junior at Ohio County High School. I'm the president of FBLA. And at our region competition in February, I'll be competing in a live job interview. So I have to compete um, amongst other teenagers and I'll submit a resume and a cover letter and then um, have a mock interview. On behalf of all the 15 kids that you guys are sponsoring, we really appreciate you all um, as a chamber supporting our group of kids. Uh, we're really excited to send them off uh, in February to Western. Uh, we'll be competing uh, against other FBLA uh, groups from across the western part of the state so just thank you all for for your financial donation also thank you for your support uh to our school and to our students and uh we look forward to uh, continuing to work with you all thank you all. just going to go over some announcements before we get to our speaker for today um just want to thank everybody that sponsored the gala everything went really well and uh, congratulations to all the winners. Um, next month we will recognize our first quarter Chamber Excellence Award, so stay tuned for that. Now I'm going to draw for the February's Business in the Spotlight, and it's OC Monitor. Okay. And the door prize, get out your tickets. It is 887-187. And what you're going to be receiving today, um, the Beaver Dam Tourism is sponsoring that, and it's Pete Rose tickets. Oh, did you win? <laughs> I need another number. <laughs> you can read it out, Sarah. Oh, Kelsey. 
thank you for sponsoring that. I'd like to remind everyone uh, about the dollars for scholars back there. There's a um, jar, and all that goes toward the uh, scholarship fund. And does anybody else have any announcements that they'd like to bring before everyone before we get to our speaker? Nope. Okay, Sarah, if you would like to come up and introduce today's speaker. Hey everybody, so for our speaker today, we're going to have Judge Executive David Johnston. He's going to come give the state of the county, so everyone please help me welcome him. Hello everyone, I sure appreciate this opportunity, and this is my 10th one uh, before the chamber in uh, January of each year, and uh, time has flown. It doesn't seem possible it could be that long. Um, I'm going to start as I've been able to in every year, uh, but I will tell you to start with that the state of our county is good. We have a lot of things to be thankful for, and it's still the greatest place on earth to live. Uh, I plan not to talk to you about roads this time because it seems like I have to do that every year a little bit. I so much wanted to change the subject. But uh, in 2019, we paved a record number of roads, miles, and a record amount was spent on roads. We spent $1,748,903 on pavement this year. Uh, which is way more than a normal. Our normal budget for that is the only thing we don't have that we're guaranteed that their flex funds is about 300000 per year. So that gives you an idea. Uh, and my goal has always been to pave every road uh, where people live so that everyone would have a good hot, hot, hard surface road. That's been the goal. And that goal is actually within reach. It, it's something very close to us. We've done so much lately. But now here's the issue. The two main ways that we have done this paving is with co-severance money and with the governor's line item discretionary money. Uh, as you know, co-severance is declining and the discretionary funds from the governor come from gas tax proceeds, which is declining, as well as co service. And those are our two main ways of funding it. And as folks are doing this all the way across the state, and uh, the state chamber, I think, is involved in this as well. Uh, but the main source of, of fixing your roads and paving them and everything is CRA money, county road aid. And that comes from the gas tax. And the price of uh, construction materials and road maintenance materials are going up. And these uh, CRA funds are declining. This is the same pool of money that the state depends on to do their uh, secondary roads. And how much uh, what we call flex that's our normal paving money. That said, it was around 300000 a year now. But that is dependent upon the condition of the state roads. So with their money declining to do their state secondary roads, then also the flex funds is what they pass on to us. That declines too because it's based on the condition of their roads. Um, we all across the state is asking chambers and citizens at large to call their legislators and tell them that they need to uh, provide us more uh, CRA, County Road Aid. And to do that, what you are asking for is for them to raise the gas tax. Uh, but we're 32nd 
and gas tax out of the 50 states. We're 20 cents below the average per gallon on tax on gas. Well, I know that may be a hard thing. Hey, I'm going to go ask the legislature to raise the gas tax and I have to pay more at the pump. It actually doesn't work that way. Uh, and this is evident by states where the uh, neighborhoods in two different states are really close together and one has a much higher uh, gas tax than the other ones, like our bordering states around Kentucky. Uh, it, it's, it's supply and demand. It really, the uh, it's not proportionate to what your gas tax is. So you're not really asking to be your price at the pump raised. Uh, but this is this is a reached an emergency state. Uh, and what we're asking the general assembly to do is raise it about a, a quarter uh, to get us just up there in the average uh, of the states. And that would assure that we could continue to fix these roads. Like I said, the lights right at the end of the tunnel, if we could keep the funds coming in the way they've been doing, we would be able to uh, complete this dream of having every road in the county paved where people live, uh, as well as cut through roads and things of that nature. So we had really, it was attainable at the rate we were receiving. But now then with the coast service going down, uh, county road aid going down, prices going up, it's a problem for us. So like I said, I would urge each one of you to uh, to uh, urge their uh, legislature to uh, uh, fix this problem for us. Uh, next subject to talk about, I know you've heard about the layoffs at the mines. This does impact our government revenue, but the hardship imposed on those workers and their families is our greatest concern. Um, as a community, community, we're more diversified than in the past, and coal booms and busts doesn't impact the county the same way it once did. Manufacturing, farming, and processing are a big part of our economy now. Um, our Economic Development Alliance, OCEA, is constantly working to recruit new business that would build up our county economically. Also, with the reduction in coast severance funds, we continue to provide the services we're dependent upon. Our departments all do a good job on providing these services, which are too many to list. Uh, and uh, tourism is one of the, those uh, services that's uh, doing really well in our county. Um, and as far as us trying to figure out a way of paying for these services that no, no longer can be paid for with coast severance money, we're really close to having our 911 uh, funds secured where that, that will be taken care of. And that will be one thing, one service will be continued that won't be dependent upon uh, the county's uh, coast service money or other funds. Same way with fire and emergency services. We're looking at a way to try to get those paid for and independent of, uh, of uh, co-service money. So we are, and that's what we're supposed to do is in county government, we're supposed to look at a way to provide you services. We sure don't want to ever uh, drop any of the services we are, are uh, providing. Uh, our parks are striving to become more self-sufficient and uh, they're trying to get more revenue so that the, their subsidy required by the, the fiscal court won't be as great. Uh, and a little bit of good news, we finally passed an ordinance here that will allow us to cut down on the litter in our county. I've always been concerned, even before I was judge executive, that we do not want litter on our highways. We don't want people dumping things and having uh, eyesores for people to see driving through and uh, and accuse our county flower of being the sycamore bloom that's a Walmart bag in a tree. <laughs> and, you know, we're really working on trying to clean up 
uh, community and this ordinance that was just recently passed is going to do huge things uh, for that. It's the way that early on when I came into office we passed a uh, animal control ordinance and how that solved those problems from uh, basically we were uh, euthanizing 35 to 50 animals a week and now we're at zero. If you take out the uh, sick and injured and vicious, we, we don't. We're basically a no-kill facility with our shelter. And I mention that because that can, that's what I hope this uh, litter ordinance does, uh, a trash ordinance does for uh, litter the same way that is done for animals. And uh, I want to say again, as I began, the state of our county is good. And uh, I would entertain any question anyone would have for me. Got another minute or two. Anybody got any questions? Must have been pretty thorough then, huh? <laughs> but I do appreciate everybody's attention. And it's a pleasure to serve you. And hope to continue to do so while. See you. Thank you, David. You're right. It's, it's a really good county to be in. Um, thank you all for coming out today. Appreciate it. And our next meeting will be February the 18th. So just put that on your calendar. Thank you all. <laughs>